for anything from triggering events within your world, such as opening some hidden passageway, or even interacting with puzzles or menu interaction, levers are a great addition to have in any VR game. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you just how to add a very simple lever into your own VR project. But before we jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. Now let's go ahead and get started here with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and start by opening up our content browser. And I wanna create a new folder here. I'm just gonna call this interfaces. We're only really gonna have one, but figure why not interfaces. Now in here, we're gonna create a blueprint interface. And I'm just gonna go and call this grab. Now this I've done in a lot of my previous tutorials, so this should be pretty, um, if you watch any of my previous tutorials, a lot of this should be pretty standard at this point compared to a lot of those ones. So we're gonna set two functions, grab and release. In each of these, we're also going to add an input for motion controller. And let me go and change that type to motion controller. There we go. And same here for a release. That was the wrong button. <laughs> release, and I'm just gonna go and call that motion controller as well. And that's all we need here for our grab and release. So I'm gonna go and compile all that, close down our uh, interface there. So with our interface all done, let's jump back into our content browser and now we can actually start working on the lever. So I'm gonna create another new folder here called Blueprints. And in here is where I'm going to create our lever. So, and this is type actor as well. So just so you're aware, um, for our lever, so the way that this is gonna work is we're going to add in two stack mesh components. One is going to be kind of a root component that just kind of shows where our lever actually is, where the origin of that lever is. And then we're going to create a second stack mesh that's actually going to be our handle. And that handle is what's actually going to be grabbed and that's what we're going to manipulate so that way it actually follows around our hand when we go to grab it. All that kind of fun stuff. So, let's go and start by adding in those two stack meshes. So I'm going to go and create a, our first stack mesh and I'll just leave that called stack mesh. We're really not going to do anything special to this. It's just some kind of root component that shows where a lever is. This is honestly entirely optional too. You really don't need this. Um, but this is just something I like to have just so we can see where our lever actually is and make sure that's not rotating, that the entire thing isn't rotating with us. And we don't need to do anything else beyond that point. But going on to our second static mesh, go and open that up. I'm just gonna call this handle. And this stack mesh, I'm going to set to a pillar. Now I find that the pillar is pretty good for what we need here. It's, it's a nice long handle and it actually has our, its origin point is actually set right where we need it. So this is something important to note when you're dealing with the lever. We're going to be rotating around wherever the origin point is, which is what makes this one so good. As you can see, it's right at the bottom center of the pillar here which is great. If we were to have it somewhere up in the center like we would have with a cylinder, for example, or anything of that nature, then we'd actually have an issue where it's actually going to do more of a rotate rather than a pivot. So do keep that in mind, whatever static mesh you do decide to use, you do wanna make sure that it has something here at the bottom middle, or that's origin point is down here at the bottom middle. Um, it doesn't even necessarily need to be the middle depending on your stack mesh, but bottom middle tends to be a pretty good spot for most levers. Um, so just keep that in mind there. So go and compile all that. And before we go on to our event graph, I also want to add in that grab interface under implemented interfaces and that was under class settings. Now that we're all set up here with our components and our implemented interfaces, now we can move on to our event graph. Now. I've already gone ahead and removed what we don't need, our uh, events that we aren't going to need, which were the begin play and the actor begin overlap. I did leave the tick because we are going to be using this to actually control the movement of our handle. Um, but we'll jump to that in a sec. I wanna start by setting up our grab and release since we need to make sure that these are set up first. So let me go and implement each of these. So implement events. And these are gonna be pretty simple for the most part. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our motion controller and our grab, and we're just gonna promote that to a variable, and that's all that we need to do for the grab. 
For our release, we just need to do a little bit more. So I'm going to take our motion controller and I am going to check to see if this is equal, equal to the motion control that we are getting from the release. And assuming that it is using a branch, then we're just going to go and set our motion controller back to null. Now, the reason we're actually doing this check right here, this uh, comparing our motion control that we have stored to the motion control we're getting, is because if we were to grab with our left hand and then we were to grab with our right hand, and then we, for example, release with our left hand, then if we are not doing this check and our release hasn't run on our left hand, then it'll actually trigger the release um, and it'll just jump right over to our motion controller. So we need to make sure that whatever hand is actually grabbing is triggering the release. So now that we've finished with the grab and release, now we can move on to our event tick. Now this is where we're actually going to control the movement of our handle, actually uh, rotate it the way that we want it to be rotated. So before we actually go ahead and start doing, uh, before we actually start finding out what our new rotation needs to be for our handle, I want to get our motion controller and we need to check to see if it's valid. Now I want to give a shout out to uh, Darth Jandis, if I recall who actually pointed out that rather than doing is valid like this, we can actually right click and convert to valid data get. I really wanna thank him for that. That's a really awesome little tip that uh, he pointed out to me that really helps make everything a little bit uh, smoother and a little bit easier to read. So thank you very much for that. Um, but anyways, now that we have our, now that we're checking to see if it's valid, we now need to find what rotation our static mesh needs to be, or our handle needs to be in. So to do this, we're gonna start by getting our motion controller and I wanna get world transform. And using this world transform, I want to make a relative transform. And this is going to create a relative transform relative to whatever, whatever transform we set in here. In this case, I wanna take our handle and I want to get the world transform here. Now, I don't want to feed this in exactly as it is, and this is honestly a really good tip if you need to offset the rotation of your handle. If you split this struct pin and feed in the, the location and the scale, quite frankly, our scale I think will be the same. I don't think that's going to matter too much. Um, but anyways, feeding in our rotation, we can actually modify this rotation in order to offset our handle. And that's actually something we need to do for this pillar. It'll actually be off 90 on the Y, if I recall. So we're going to uh, combine rotators and I'm just going to add 90 on that Y and that's going to go into our return value. And that will offset our, uh, our pillar so that way it will actually follow our hand correctly. If we don't do this, it'll actually kind of follow at an angle. It'll still technically follow. It'll, it just won't be at the correct angle that we want it to be at. So now that's all that we're going to need in order to actually find our relative transform. So going on from this point, now we need to actually find a look at rotation that we're going to use here. So I'm going to split this struct pin and I'm going to find look at rotation and this return value location is going to go into our target. Now for a start, because we know that our that that we have our transform centered around wherever our handle is, we know that our handle is going to be at the origin point of this new transform. So rather than getting a new transform or anything like that or any new location, I'm just going to make a vector for the start. And this will help us find a look at rotation from wherever our handle is to wherever our hand is. And that's going to be relative to our hand. Now, if you followed along so far, you may be a little bit confused as to why we decided this setup, why we're centering it to the handle, not the stack mesh or the default scene root, or even to the actor itself. Now, the reason for that is because rather than finding the exact rotation of wherever our, our handle needs to be, what we're gonna do here is I'm going to split the struct pin, I'm gonna grab our handle, and I'm going to get relative rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to add on whatever value we want here to the value here to actually find what our new rotation is. Rather than set a rotation, we're going to add on to what we need. So I'm going to take our pitch. I'm going to add that to our return value here. 
Um, and in this case, I'm using Y. You should be able to use X or Z if you want to change up whatever rotation you're using. Um, for this instance, I'm just using Y because it's nice and easy to use. And I'm going to clamp this float. Now, in this case, I want it to rotate 90 degrees. So I'm going to set our minimum to zero and our max to 90. Now, if you want for it to be able to rotate 180, maybe 90 in each direction, you can set this to a negative 90 for our minimum, and it'll allow for us to rotate 90 degrees in either direction, um, or you could do more or less, or whatever it is that works for you. Now, finally, we just need to set our relative rotation for our handle. And this is where, and this is quite simple here, so I'm just going to set relative rotation, go ahead and, ooh, split our new rotation and this value is going to go into our Y since we were uh, finding out our new rotation for our Y here. And finally, we just need to take our is valid and bring that over here into set relative rotation. Um, I actually ended up coming up quite a bit on all that. So let's go and bring that all down. There we go. And that will actually control the rotation of our lever. So I'm going to go and compile, save that. I'm going to go and close that. Now, in order to actually make this usable, we actually need to be able to call that grab and release interface. So I'm going to open up our VR template under blueprints and VR pawn. And now we're going to actually call those grab and release when we're actually in range of the lever. So I'm going to do this by grabbing our grab left from up here in our VR pawn. There we go. So now down here for our grab left and our grab right, now we need to actually set our set, set up so we can actually call that grab and release that we set up in our um, in our lever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, sphere overlap actors, and this is gonna be unpressed. For our sphere position, I'm going to grab our motion controller left. I'm going to get world location pass that through to our sphere position. Our radius, I'll set to a 20 for this example here. Our object type, I'm going to make an array and I'm gonna set this to world dynamic for our lever here. And for our out actors, I'm going to do a for each loop with a break. And assuming that this uh, contains, or not contains, uh, does implement interface and we want to find our grab interface on our loop body I'm going to branch and we're going to pass through that does implement interface uh, if it does we're going to store this actor so I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to set this to left grab actor let me go ahead and reroute that node a little bit And now that we have set our left grab actor, I'm going to trigger our grab message. And we also need to pass through our motion controller. So that's gonna be motion controller left. And then I'll go and bring this around to our break. There we go. And for our release, I'm going to go ahead and get our left grab actor again. Um, I'm going to check to see if this is valid. And then if it is valid, we're going to take our left grab actor, we're first going to trigger release and pass through our motion controller left. And then once we've hit the release, then we're also going to set our left grab actor back to null. And that's all we need to do for our grab. So I'm going to go and copy all this, bring it down, and we're just going to make a couple of changes to our references here for our grab right. So I'm going to change this to our motion controller right. I'm going to go ahead, we'll come, we'll come back here to this release down here because we are going to need to create a new variable. Um, for our left grab actor, I'm going to take this, promote this to a variable, and change that to right grab actor. And then if we go and delete that left grab actor, I'm gonna bring this forward, run just like that, just reconnect our, uh, all of our execution nodes and our reference nodes, uh, take our motion controller right, pass that through, and 
quite frankly, we can't use most of this, so I'm just going to delete all of this, and I'm going to take our right grab actor, first check to see if it's valid again, and then assuming that it is, we're going to release, passing through our motion controller right once again, and then we will just set our right grab actor back to null, just like that. And that's all we need to do for our player. So now we are all set up to use the lever. So I'm going to compile and save all this, close that down. And then jumping into our VR template here, I'm going to go and drop in a couple of levers here. So let's go and drop one right over here. That is quite large. So I'm going to scale that down. Let's do maybe like 0.25, I think should be pretty good. Uh, let's do a little bit smaller, maybe like 0.15. Yeah, this will be a bit of a tall lever simply because we're using this pillar, but it should still work pretty fine. All right, so I brought in our lever here. I'm now in VR, as you can see. So here we have our lever, and if I just move my hand around it, nothing happens. Now if I go and grab it, then you can see now it starts to follow me. It only follows me to a point. So you can see right here, it can't follow me anymore, but if I bring it down here, then it, it also start, it, it also stop at, uh, at a 90 degree angle here. And like I said, if you wanted to modify the clamp value so that way it could extend either the other direction, or maybe you want it to be able to extend both directions, or maybe you don't want it to go quite as far, you want it to go further, whatever the case may be, this gives you plenty of options to work with. So it allows for me to move it all up and down. And as you can see, I can push it forward, back, nothing changes. It won't let me push it any further in any other direction. I also can't rotate it as you can see either. Um, it'll only move on the one axis up and down or only rotate on the, the one axis, I guess. It's not technically moving, I guess. Um, but yeah, so there you go. So you can see, and then also I can go ahead and switch hands as well. And you can see that if I release, nothing changes. It'll just track the other hand and it all work as planned. So there you go. And with that, that's how we put together a very simple lever that can be used in any VR application. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shot to my Patreon support so you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I will see you in the next reality.